Hello and welcome to this Man and Machine video. Today we'll be taking some of the key facts from this State of Design and Make report that Autodesk have released for the 2025 year and looking at one of the key insights being Insight 4, uh, where is the impact of AI in the current market and I guess how that's currently translating and I guess where we may be going in the future. And this video is going to focus on a few of the key tools that Autodesk have available right now within their CAD packages. And I'm going to focus specifically on the manufacturing side of the software as of course that's um, my key speciality. And so we're going to start off with AutoCAD. So the first tool I'll be showing is the markup tool within AutoCAD. So I've got a very simple drawing here. It's a demo data set, but for the most part I've gone and created a PDF of this drawing. I've already gone and added a markup or a singular note to this drawing. I'll go add another one uh, quickly. I didn't want to add too many as I'm not got the best Adobe skills, but let's just say we didn't want that dimension there and we wanted to just put in a little note saying remove the dim and because I tested earlier, it's going to pop up. So that's fine. I'm going to save my PDF. And so, of course, we've done a markup and this could be a traditional sort of process. It could have been handwritten notes and then scanned back into the system as a PDF or however you wanted to access this PDF. But for the most part, from here, we can use the tools in AutoCAD, which uh, we can find from the Collaborate tab and we can import or use the markup import. So I just go and find my markup. And as I bring it in, it uses cloud services and uh, an AI or smart learning engine to then bring it in and overlay it onto our drawing. Now I'm in the paper space currently, which is of course not necessarily always the best place to be doing our markups, but you can see how it overlays the PDF view right into my drawing. So I can actually do the live um, markups with that in mind. And I thought I would also show just from, if I jump over to the model, I'll close that quickly and jump over to the model space where, of course, I don't have the two views. So, um, and just to show some of the intelligence that's coming in here, I will go and overlay it here once again. And we should see that although it has a view that it can't line up, it lines up the main and first view to our um, model space as well. So I can actually even, you know, uh, although it was a paper space PDF, I can do my markups where I like uh, with a little bit of imagination, of course, that view not being present, but I can, of course, then go ahead and remove that um, dimension. Oh, sorry, I need to be in the drawing. So going to the drawing, I can then go and remove. Um, now we've got a note to then go and increase both sides. So we will use our, I'll just use a command line, bring up my stretch and go ahead and affect those changes. Um, so this is a, a great tool, I feel. Uh, I think a lot of us still do our markups with red pen. We still do the old traditional ways of getting um, the markups to the team. But once the team have them, they then sit in with that set of markups on their desk. They look in down and up and down and up. And I guess this is a nice way to sort of bring it to a more digital workflow. Um, and then once we're done, just closing it off brings it or uh, drops off the PDF overlay, and we can then finish off our drawing and have our markups complete. So a nice tool from AutoCAD, I think, you know, it, it's got a lot of potential for future use as well, whereas, you know, perhaps in the future we may be seeing something like full-blown automatic markups or something to that effect, but quite an exciting little tool and quite handy. Then jumping over to the Fusion side, I'm going to highlight one of the tools that's been in Fusion for a very long time. I can't say exactly, but I know it's been out for a good, well, nearly as long as Fusion has been. It was one of the earlier things to release and one of the more exciting uh, pieces of generative software or kit that we had available to us. So um, what I am talking about is, of course, the generative design environment within Fusion. So if I go and have a look, so we're starting off and in this case, I've just taken one of the example ones. And if you wanted to have a look um, and have, try it out for yourself, there are some generative design samples within the Fusion default install. So you can find that at the bottom. If you scroll down to the bottom of your projects, 
uh, browser and you can find the Geneta Design examples. Now, I've currently shown you the starting shape, which is a bracket that looks much like this. And the purpose of generative design and what we can do with generative design is then go ahead and reduce material or have, I suppose, AI generate a shape completely from scratch. So the rework process that's involved from a bracket that's already functional and uh, made for purpose to then go and have our generative design environment produce one would be a case of almost reverse modeling it. So as you can see, we've got some key sort of obstacles uh, being the red modeled geometry. The green geometry is preserved geometry, i.e. geometry that has to stay and remain in order for the bracket to be functional and actually work. And we then go ahead and apply physical loads or uh, whatever loads we require and the sort of, I suppose, um, loading that the bracket would need to withstand and some key constraints and design, well, constraints for actual FEA type constraints and fixings. And then we have some design objectives that we can also include. So we've got minimized mass and we've got some limits, which in this case, we just have a target safety factor of two. And I'm not going to generate it. It does use a cloud service once again, but you can run the generation once you've made sure that your pre-checks are all aligned. And effectively, once the job is run, which I've already gone ahead and run in the, um, earlier on, I can see that I've then got a bunch of options that are then given to me. Now I've already filtered out these results a little bit. So if I go and drop off any sort of filterings we have, you can see that quite a few outcome or possible outcomes then get delivered to us. And this is, you know, all organic type shapes and all generated um, automatically effectively, although we had to do the design work up front. It then goes and gives us proposed solutions. And based on our objective ranges, we can then decide, you know, if we wanted a little bit less volume, we can pull that down and it will start to narrow down our various results and of course we could then say actually i want a higher safety factor and that gets a few more um, results narrowed down and perhaps i wanted my mass to start coming down all of them sort of fit within the the key maths range so that's fine any one of these would be probably where i want it to be for my viable solution and from there we can simply then go and pull it out and have an example of that design. Another thing that this does take into account is the manufacturing methods that we plan to use. So whether in this case, I've gone with additive as it sort of comes out with the more um, unique designs. Whereas, of course, if we're machining certain uh, geometry probably wouldn't be as possible. So very interesting piece of technology. If you haven't used it, it is it has been used quite successfully for quite a few projects. I know um, a lot of the aerospace and automotive sort of uh, firms tend to use this type software where every bit of mass we can save can be efficiency gained so nice piece of software and then the newer one and probably the latest of them is the the new drawing environment that we have within fusion or at least the drawing automation now this is quite exciting because i guess detailing work for any designer should be the the least of their favorite tasks i mean if you liked it detailing that's perfectly fine but it's not my favorite task so starting with a model i've got a little assembly here it's just a simple uh, cupboard with a couple shelves in it and possibly overlapping shelves but that's not too important for now and what we can then do is simply click down on our environment and go and choose a drawing so from here i've got the option to manually create a drawing which would just create some drawing views or allow me to create my drawing views and choose them or I can choose automatic, which is the new sort of AI generated view creation or drawing creation, in fact, because it does the whole whole lot. And choosing from my structure, do I want to go all levels or first levels? In this case, I've designed this to just be first level. So first level will do just fine. And you can see currently I'm going to get nine sheets. So what it's going to do is give me some GAs and some breakdowns of each component individually, um, which is very handy so you can see that it's generated and started and this is pretty quick well, I've said that now so it has to be pretty quick but it was pretty quick earlier when I gave it a go and there we go closing that message I can now see that the drawings ready so if I click to open the drawing and give it just a moment to jump into the drawing environment we can see that I've got a uh, isometric view of my actual overall assembly 
um, bill of materials or parts list placed. I can then see that I've got some baseline sort of orthographic views where top side and front um, are there with some dimensions already placed in for me. And if I start going further along, we can see that individual panels have all been created into their own drawing views. So this for me is a very exciting piece of software or piece of AI technology that's come into Fusion and I'm, I'm quite excited about where it'll go in the future. I mean, it's already very capable to get us started on our drawings. I mean, we might want to add in a few extra dimensions here and there, but even an 80% solution is always going to be better than starting from scratch. So I hope you've enjoyed my little review of a few of the AI tools that we have available to us within the Autodesk solutions. And yeah, see you next time. Thank you.